Well, surprise. Hello, my name's Meg. If you've not been here before, I have a lot of books and books I haven't read. And since March is my birthday month, I thought what better way to celebrate than by reading a book every single day. So welcome to 31 books in 31 days. I know. Today's read was heartless and since it's the start of the new F1 season, I had the best time just chilling out on the sofa and reading and watching qualifying. Uh, this is a villain origin story of the Red Queen. It really made me want to rewatch the movies because I am such a hell in the bottom Carter girly. It was great. Uh, there's definitely a, an essence of Carol in the dialogue and the way she writes her wit and bluntness and there's lots of references to the original. Of course, if you watch the original 30 Books of 30 Days, you know we're going to be seeing a lot of Susie. She is my comfort, my love. I am obsessed with her and I watched her while I read and then I sat up at my desk and finished the book. It was a fun time, a nice, exciting ride. I gave it three stars. Yeah, recommend it. Love it. We've made it to day two. I think that's an achievement. We should all be really proud. Um, today I read Assistant to the Villain, which is quite a self-explanatory title, although that's Kingsley the Frog and he is my new spirit animal. I love him. Uh, today was a day full of sport. I watched the Stradabianchi and Formula One. Formula One made me want to actually get a lobotomy. It was awful. But the book I was reading, I really enjoyed. Now, looking at the Goodreads, it kind of looks like a I hate it, I love it or hate it, Marmite. That was my reaction to the Grand Prix, by the way. Um, like a Marmite kind of book, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, I wasn't expecting the way it ended. I thought it was like a standalone romantic book. Absolutely not. Do not go into it with the expectations that I had. Aw, oh, there's Susie. I'm so, so damn bad for her at the moment. It is despicable. But I love the chemistry between our main characters. I feel like definitely there could have been a lot better development, especially considering it wasn't the standalone that I was expecting it to be. We don't really know much about the magic or the world, but hopefully in the next book we should. And overall, I, I really enjoyed it. It was a fun time. And also wild. The twist had me wild. We're on day three of 31 books of Pokemon Day, so round of applause for me. Today I read Delilah Green Doesn't Care, but not before I'd spent most of my morning watching Susie Wolf, as I should. Uh, I enjoyed this book, it was a sapphic romance, which is why I read it, because I was really in the mood for sapphic romance. So it was a super quick read, because I always read romances so much faster. Uh, the relationship between the sisters hit uh, home and hurt, <laughs> but we won't talk about that. Uh, so I enjoyed their story arc it was quite predictable but like what can you expect from a romance you know it was quite predictable and tropey but it was a fun time i also look like death here because <laughs> my family has all been sick and i think i'm finally getting it because my head was so painful so i probably would have enjoyed this book more had i not felt like i was actually dying <laughs> Uh, you can see on my face. I'm not having a lovely time, but the book, it's not because of the book, it's because I felt poorly. But hopefully today should be better, and I don't know whether I should read the rest of the series in the challenge or not. Let me know if you think the other two books are worth it. Day four, and today's kind of a short one and a little bit boring, but stick with me. Tomorrow will be better, I promise. Uh, I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and I read it in one sitting because I had a lot I actually needed to do on this day, and I also had a massive headache. But it was exactly the kind of cozy and short and sweet book I was looking for. I never read this as a child, so I got to feel like I was re experiencing that childhood wonder to when I read it, and it was really sweet. I loved it. I gave it four stars, of course, because it's just, it's a classic for a reason, you know? Like, the use of imagination and just feeling like you're going mad with Alice and knowing that you are mad, you know? I kind of, it struck a chord in me as a neurodivergent woman, what can I say? Uh, but yeah, I literally just read this in one go and then made cookies and did a load of jobs. So I told you it was boring, but I promise it's gonna get better. Scouts on up. So I ended up reading two books on day five because I have no self-control and it ended up being like 800 pages of sapphic goodness because of course it was um here's me cracking the spine because everyone hates that and it makes me laugh but you guys said you really loved the next two books in the delilah green series so i thought why not read them i read astrid parker first and i 
can just say I'm yawning here, but that is not indicative of how I thought about the book. I gave it three and a half stars because I didn't like Jordan, but I really liked Astrid and it balanced it out. There's Wilson because I feel like you haven't had enough Wilson in these videos. And then I started Iris Kelly, which Iris was like the character I liked the least out of the like friendship group. But this book definitely helped me see her in a different light. Especially because I really related to Stevie. Oh, I made us dinner, I made macaroni and cheese, and I was watching the snooker. Because if you don't know, I have a hyperfixation on snooker at the moment. Ronnie O'Sullivan. But anyway, yeah, I enjoyed this book. It was my favourite out of all of them. I gave it four stars. Uh, it was just, it was the most relatable to me and the one that gave me the most feels. So I finished it surprisingly early at like 7pm. And then I got a kiss from my dog because he's a lovely boy. Okay, so we're on day seven, but I didn't read anything on day six because I'd read two books the day before and it was kind of a fail because I watched F1 Academy all day and had a full freak out over Susie Wolf. Those are the brownies I made. Uh, then it started and I was a little nerd and I got a little bit too excited and uh, got a bit emotional because the autism was autisming. <laughs> but there we go. Ironheart, I'm really enjoying. Uh, it's a very interesting book. The sci-fi is very cool. Uh, oh look, there's Susie. <laughs> uh, the sapphic relationship is like just starting to blossom as I put it down for the night. But be not afeard, for I shall finish it today and also read another book because otherwise I'll be behind. But yeah, it's F1 Academy is live on YouTube every session, by the way. So if you want to watch it, go to their YouTube channel. And enjoy the Susie like I do. <laughs> Day 8 of trying to read 31 books in 31 days. And today I technically read two books. Like finished two books. But mainly I just watched Susie. So I finished Ironheart. Which is the sequel to Cry's War. I gave it three and a half stars. I kind of thought it would probably would have worked better as a trilogy. Just because I feel like there was so much of the world we never got to learn about. That I would have really enjoyed learning about. But then I started Horrid by Katrina Leno, my Palomic Faith CD came, and Susie was on my TV, and I had the best time ever watching women race, and I got a little bit emotional because I just love her so much, and I'm so proud of her. Horrid was also super cool, it, I gave it four stars. It's kind of like a haunted house, like creepy horror ghost story, it was so much fun. It's a YA, but it doesn't have any of the like, forced romance that a lot of YA books have but I found that kind of aged up a little bit for me but I overall it was a super wild ride I just wanted to keep reading to find out what was happening I guess I had a really good day yesterday just a day full of reading good books and Susie like what more can you want in life we're up to day 10 on reading 31 books in 31 days and I had a hankering, a need to read the Crazy Rich Asian series, I don't know why. It was Mother's Day in the UK so I gave my mum the little airpod pouch I made her, it was very cute. Um, I'm technically behind because I didn't read anything on day 9 because I put my back out and spent the whole day flat. But <laughs> I started Crazy Rich Asians, I read some of it on my Kindle and it was wild. I mean, crazy is certainly one way to describe it. I had a pretty fun time though, I just love like rich people drama books because like I'm never gonna relate to anything in these books, maybe that's why I enjoy them so much, it's not gonna make me sad because I'm never gonna have billions to spend, <laughs> but I finished that, I gave it I think three and a half stars, it might have been three, I can't remember, all I remember is I enjoyed it but like it was very much written by a man, I then popped my favourite Susie documentary on of course because I was feeling a little under the weather uh, and started the second book which I think is called China, China Rich girlfriend oh god i can't remember but yeah so far also enjoying this one and i read that until i fell asleep to the sound of Susie. it was excellent my day 11 started despicably early so i found a guy who has uploaded a load of dtm races that Susie used to race in there she is in all four of her pixel glory uh, and then I sort of lounged until I fell back asleep and then once I got up for good <laughs> at like 11 I finished off China Rich Girlfriend which I was planning to read the full trilogy but having finished this book 
I just felt like if I read any more rich people drama, I I would probably explode because I just I was losing empathy very swiftly. Then I read Some Girls Do, which is a sapphic romance. And listen, if you're in for a sapphic romance, evermore if you're girly. I put this on my Goodreads like four times. If you follow me on Goodreads, you're like, what? Uh, But I kept getting distracted. I ended up finally reading it. I literally read it in one sitting. It was really quick, fast romance. Um, The characters were certainly something. I did not like any of them. They were all insufferable. But like, gay was fun, but that was pretty much it. And I was quite glad when it was over. I gave it two stars, but oh well. So, day 12, while PMDD was kicking my butt, I finished off the Crazy Rich Asian series with book 3, Rich People Problems, which kind of is the title that sums up one of my favourite genres of books. I love reading books about rich people and their problems, because I will never relate to them. Um, But this was easily the best book in the trilogy, I so enjoyed it. I made a cake as well, because why not? Uh, Listened to Taylor most of the day, and just absorbed myself in these problems that I am never going to experience. But I felt like we were really getting somewhere with the plot of this, and we were learning a lot more about the characters, and there was a lot of development. I just really enjoyed it. It was also deceptively long. Like, this book does not look long, but it had, like, Bible-thin pages, and it ended up being, like, over 500 pages long. So, round of applause for me for finishing that when I felt so bad. (laughs) But overall, I gave it a four stars, like I said, easily my favourite in the trilogy, and um, just a super fun read. There was a little bit of mystery with it as well. Oh, there's Willie. And then I finished off my day watching Susie, as I should, and uh, going to sleep, which really, I just want to do every day. So on day 13 I thought I'd try something a bit different, so I perused my parents' bookshelves and I found a cute little book because I definitely wanted something short because I'm still sort of in the throes of PMDD, but because I feel like I don't talk about books in a short form context very well, I feel like I come across as really unintelligent. Um, This is a slightly longer vlog and just an uncut version of how long it took me to read this book. So it was about 150 pages and it took me just over an hour. I think I stopped like once to take my tablets, but I had the most fun ever reading this. I loved it so much. I do have a YouTube channel if you want to watch me talk about books in a more intelligent and less garbled way. Um, But in terms of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, five stars. And like five stars is like a life changing book for me. But it was so funny and endearing and just it felt like reading a a children's book but like for adults if that makes sense like the way it was written just filled me with this beautiful childlike wonder that like reminded me why I loved reading so much as a child you can see me laughing the whole way through it because it was just so funny and I definitely want to seek out the rest of these books my mum only has the first one but it's part of like a trilogy of I want to say four or five and I definitely want to find the rest of them because I had the best time. It was just such a fun way to disappear for an hour and live in another world. And Arthur's level of sarcasm is honestly so very me. I loved that man. I loved the book. I just, I really want to watch the film as well now to see what it's like, but absolute time of my life today. So, day 14 of reading 31 books in 31 days. I read Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare in one day because, of course I did, Cassandra Clare will always be one of my favourite authors. The Shadowhunter series is like one of the only book series that I'm actually up to date on. So, when I found out there was a Cassandra Clare high fantasy, you best believe I was going to read it in one day. I had the time of my little life. I made myself some tuna pasta bake. I popped red TV on because... Red Bull always used to be my least favourite era, but now I'm kind of falling in love with it. Um, I'd made it to like halfway through by about dinner time, which was like six, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to finish this, but I sped through the last half. It was so exciting. Cassandra Clare just cannot write a book that is not a page turner. Everything she writes is like laced with crack, and I just need to read more. 
I'm obsessed with her. She writes urban fantasy and high fantasy just as well as each other because her characters are so well developed and you fall in love with them and the plots are so intricate and I just... I love that woman. I really do. I just... I love her book so much. (laughs) And I need the next one. I don't know when it's coming out, but I need it, like, now. God bless you, Cassandra Clare. Okay, so I guess technically I'm now behind on my 31 books in 31 days challenge because this book took me two days to read. So I need to read another book to catch up. But I have a good excuse. I got my period. It was awful. So I popped Susie on and I read on my Kindle because it was the most comfortable position. And sometimes that's just what you gotta do. You've gotta find the book on your Kindle and lie down and read because lying down is just the ultimate position anyway this is unravel the dusk by elizabeth lim who i read spin the dawn who she wrote which she wrote um in a vlog on my youtube not so long ago and this is the sequel and it's a duology so it's the last one in the series it was kind of strange she does have a really beautiful way of writing descriptions with metaphors and that doesn't ever get old i have loved reading every single one of those Having said that, I had no idea what was going on at any point in this book. I'd, none of the magic was explained, we just sort of had to go with it. And I went with it, and the ending was sweet, but... What what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so it's day 17 of 31 books in 31 days, and today I read over 900 pages worth of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. I think I'm now caught up, but I probably should count as to how many books I've read. It should be 17, but who knows at this point. And I probably could have read the whole trilogy for this day, but I just didn't have the motivation. Like, I had the time to, I just didn't have the motivation. And I really, really enjoyed them. I gave the first one four and a half stars, because there's, like, angels and portals and magic, and it's just so cool. And then I gave the second one four stars, and I'm going to read the third one today, I think and just all round had a lovely time reading it. It's super engaging and Lainey Taylor's writing is really beautiful. Um, as you can see, Suzanne was a big part of my day. <laughs> we popped Susie on and I read sort of intimately on my Kindle and the physical book, which was a really fun way to read actually because you like go back to the physical book and you're like, wow, I've read so much that you couldn't really tell. So I liked that. Um, I also watched Taylor Swift because the Eras tour finally came out and I hadn't seen it so a lot of me reading this book was just me singing but definitely very excited to see how this series wraps up and to finally see where our love interest goes because things have been difficult for them put it this way and also my favourite character is Issa who is like the snake goddess And if you've read this series, you'll know why I had a full breakdown near the end of the last book. (laughs) But yeah, fun times. See you tomorrow. What day are we on? 18? Is it day 18? 31 books in 31 days. Who knows? Time is an illusion. But I finished off the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor by reading Dreams of Gods and Monsters, which is the third book. Uh, Watch the Eras tour, gave my dog some snuggles and read the 600 pages and I really really enjoyed it I loved this trilogy while the first book was definitely my favourite because it was the most well rounded in terms of the pacing oh Paloma was on Bake Off if you haven't watched it she's an icon I love her so much Uh, the first one is my favourite but the other two were both four stars so it's not like the other two were bad and I just found them so interesting that there's this almost juxtaposition of this biblical fantasy elements of angels and demons but then like the 2014 like random derp humor that's also really prevalent in the book and i just found it so funny the whole way through but yeah i loved it the ending was actually kind of unsatisfying like the epilogue kind of yeah i wanted more I'm having a bit of a brain fart today. I don't know who I am, where I am, what I am, or what I'm doing. Um, But I did read another book. Uh, A lot of people have asked how I have the time to do this. And yesterday I had, obviously when I read this book, yesterday, I had a lot of stuff I had to do. I made the Dobby that you saw. 
Matthew and Emily, if you see this, I'm sorry it took so long, it was very hard. <laughs> but I didn't start reading until probably like 8 o'clock. I put Taskmaster on because it's my favourite go-to calming down show, and I take it by 100 pages, so if I'm... Like, knowing I have to get through a book because I said I'd do this challenge, I just... I'm like, well, I can do 100 pages this hour, and then another 100 pages before I go to bed. That's how I sort of do it in my head. So I don't spend all day reading. But anyway, in terms of this book, very much the same formula as The Love Hypothesis, which I read a while ago. It was cute, it was fun. There was nothing more to it than that, really. But I mean, I'm not averse to just a cute romance, so... So I started day 21 of reading 31 books in 31 days by baking cookies and getting my favourite website back with my new uni account. Uh, and I finished it bawling my eyes out because I read In Five Years by Rebecca Searle, which I did not expect to both love and be so emotional over. Popped the Olympics on for the first time in months because my old account got deleted when I was graduated and now I'm going to somewhere else. So I got my account and anyway, I'm, I'm very happy about it, but I started this book I thought it was going to be like a fun, like, um, kind of magical realism romance. I was very wrong. Don't go into expecting that. You will have your heart shredded, uh, as I did. We uh, touch on some very heavy topics. It is very sad. From, like, halfway through, I just cried. And it was kind of predictable, but, like, that almost made it sadder because you knew, like, you were anticipating the pain that was to come. And, oh, boy, was it painful. I don't remember the last book I cried over, like this is the first book I've actually sat and cried at for a good long time. Maybe I just needed the cry that it let me have, but I lost it. <laughs> I absolutely lost it. So overall it was a very heartwarming, heartbreaking at the same time book, definitely not what I was expecting. Like it was technically a love story, but it wasn't a romance by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and yeah, as you can see. I lost my tiny mind. I am officially too short for my own bookshelves, which is a problem. But today, which was day 22, possibly, maybe, I read two more books because I had to catch up because I was one behind. That's how maths works. Um, so I chose two Tessa Bailey books, the one, the, the duology where they're up with the fishermen. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> to be honest, I don't care that much. Uh, listen, I am not a romance connoisseur nor a literary snob. I just like having a good time with my books. And there was an element of a good time, like I enjoyed reading it. It wasn't like painful to get through but I definitely don't get the hype for Tessa Bailey I'm sorry there were just so many word choices that had me reeling and I was like is this supposed to be attractive because I feel a bit uncomfortable <laughs> the first one was definitely the better book though probably because I liked the characters more in it the second one I just did not really it was basically the same plot but with like two other tropes thrown in there that were kind of poorly executed and honestly I was a Sergio girl so that ruined that for me I watched the skating all night and then I decided I wasn't gonna watch the F1 and I'm not gonna watch it tonight knowing my luck it will be I'll be awake anyway and it will be an absolute travesty for a Mercedes fan but you know we'll see so I gave them three stars and three and a half stars I think day 23 of reading 31 books in 31 days i was in an absolutely foul mood let me tell you uh so i thought how can i make this worse <laughs> and i chose the most depressing book i could think of which was the road by cormac mccarthy which i mean it did the job i was even more depressed than when i started i also had a massive headache but i don't think that was the book's fault um definitely bleak and sad and the pathos with which mccarthy writes the little boy in the book is genuinely kind of traumatizing to read so i gave it five stars because it was like spectacularly written and made me feel a lot of things but like also don't read this it's so sad 
it's so it's set in like a post-apocalyptic world of this man and his son trying to survive and i love post-apocalyptic things i love zombies and um like viruses anything like that world war z i just i love post-apocalyptic stuff don't ask um but we don't really know much about what happened in this we just know that now everything is sad and people are eating each other um and as you can see i did another cry but yeah five stars really enjoyed it also very sad So I've definitely realised I'm not so much reading a book in a day as reading two books and then taking a day off and then reading two books again, which I kind of did again this day, except I read two and a half books, so I was adamant I was going to read the whole Raven uh, series in the one day, and I probably would have if it was like me last year, but me this year, not a chance. Also, do you like the folklore book book bookmark? Because I am probably going to be selling them. Cute. Anyway, I really enjoyed the first book. I'd read it before, but I didn't remember anything about it, so I definitely am glad I reread it, and I think I enjoyed it more the second time around. Uh, then we got into the second book, and I'm not gonna lie, it made my head spin just a little bit. I was like, what's what's going on? There was just a little bit about the dreaming and what's real and what's not that made me slightly existential. Um, but I watched the Olympics, and I watched Susie all day. I cannot express how happy I am to have my learning on screen back. I feel like I'm back in my safe place. And then I started book three. I made it about halfway through book three. And then my plan was to finish the rest today, but I am so tired that I haven't. So guess what? We're gonna take a day off and do another two books because that's how this works out. But yeah, overall definitely enjoying this series. Def nothing less than three stars so far. Fun and whimsy and found family is just one of my favorite tropes, so. Today's reading vlog is kind of boring. I did a lot of baking. I painted my ear as nails for my birthday and listened to Annie Lennox most of the day. Uh, that was how much was left because nothing lasts longer than the three seconds in this godforsaken house. And then I finally picked up Blue Lily, Lily Blue. That's really hard to say. Say that five times fast. Um, didn't, didn't overly enjoy it. It kind of made my head spin because like what's real and what's not. And that just makes me feel slightly disorientated. <laughs> and I knew if I started the fourth book in this series, it would put me in a reading slump, especially because I had not got the brain power to cope with a fantasy. Like, as much as I love fantasy, you need a certain amount of thought processing <laughs> to really get the most of it. And I do not have that power at the moment. So I gave it two and a half stars, but I feel like that was probably more the time I read it than whether I actually enjoyed it, so I will probably reread it at some point. Um, then obviously I watch Susie for the rest of the night, because I'm me. So we're at the last weekend of 31 books in 31 days, thank god my brain is frazzled. I guess that also means it's now my birthday weekend. Yay. Um, <laughs> but because I have no thoughts anymore, I was like, I'm doing romance, I'm doing romance probably for the rest of this challenge. Uh, and since I bought like every one of Anna Huang's books, <laughs> I thought we'll give it, we'll give her a try, give her a fair shot. Definitely better than Tessa Bailey. That's my my first judgment. Um, I chose King of Wrath first because it's a billionaire romance, <laughs> and I just wanted to be in my Toto Wolf fields. So in that respect, it was really good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there were some certain bits of it that were, like, a bit dodgy writing-wise, but, like, it was a fun time. I had a nice time. Like I said, better than Tessa Bailey. Not much else to say about it, really, other than it was okay. I gave, I think I gave it two and a half stars, which is, like, directly down the middle, so, yeah. Enjoyed. Fun times. We're truly on the home stretch of 31 books in 31 days now, and I... Decided I was going to read more Anna Huang. Uh, I kind of like did a double take because it had one of my favourite songs in the playlist at the start. And I feel like nobody ever talks about Emily Sunday, But she's the love of my life. Um, I didn't want to carry on with the King of blah 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 series. Because I wasn't as interested in the characters and I thought I'd get bored. I kind of wish I had now because definitely Anna Huang's writing has improved since she wrote the Twisted series to... That's my dog, please ignore that. To 
the king of whatever series because this book was kind of insane and not really in a good way like i just she has a very melodramatic way of writing that means that when actual drama happens it's no different to the every like all the other scenes in the book but like it's just ridiculous like it's so out of the blue and so strange the concept i don't know how to explain probably how bizarre this book was um but I still enjoyed it more than the Tessa Bailey books, so what does that say about me? Um, so I finished the first book, and I started the second book. My plan was to read them both, because I am technically still a book behind, we won't talk about that. Um, but I started it at like half seven, and given that I've been going to bed before eight most of the day time this like month, I didn't get very far. I got about a quarter of the way through, and then I actually picked up on my which I don't do very often but I the book I the Kindle I read romance books on doesn't have a backlight and I wanted to fall asleep reading it so phone it was um yeah second book better so far I'm not even gonna lie to you as I'm recording this I'm on the verge of a full meltdown so I have come to hide in my room and record this obviously um 31 books in 31 days, that's what we're talking about, right? I had to catch up because I was one behind, so now I'm officially on track. I've got one more book to read, and this day I finished Twisted Games is the second one, I think. Uh, the age gap was not age gapping like I promised, and it was very predictable. Um, better than the first one, but not by much. <laughs> then I read Mr. Hockey, which is like a sports romance, obviously. I mean, this was just wild. <laughs> it was very short, which is why I picked it, because I literally had just like the evening to read it in because we've got family here and stuff um it was painfully cringy like the actual premise and the story wasn't too bad but the dialogue oh my god i've never read cringy dialogue like it like it was making me physically react that was that was how cringe the dialogue was but we move i finished it so <laughs> 30 out of 31 one more to go let's go boys <laughs> We made it, we made it to day 31. I didn't think we were going to get here, but we did. Uh, I had a lovely bath and then I sort of cheated. Is it cheating? It was still a book. But I had a very overwhelming day, so I knew I only wanted to read something short. And I chose a camu from my modern Penguin Classics box that I've never actually cracked out. <laughs> uh, this is just the one that called to me. I was looking over and I was like, I want to create dangerously. Um, it's just like some essays ruminating on the creative process and the importance of creativity and art. Um, sort of in the 1950s, he wrote them. Honestly, it made me want to write a set of essays just like spiraling existentially. That's usually what Cammy makes me want to do, to be fair. So as you can see, I just watched Susie and I read it in like 30 minutes and I had a lovely time and I felt a great sense of accomplishment because your girl read 31 books in 31 days. Haven't actually checked that, so if I count on my Goodreads now and it's not, I'll cry. <laughs>